Hi, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. Today we're in this attic of this large home and when we came in here to evaluate how to make this house more energy efficient, the attic is our A priority. When we look at an attic, we want to uh, stop air from coming up through the uh, ceiling from the conditioned space, the heat from getting into the attic and being lost because this is a vented attic like most attics are. It has soffit vents and ridge vents and so the outside air can get right into this attic. Today it's 36 degrees out and in this attic it's 39 degrees. Also very cold but a little bit warmer. Why is it warmer in the attic? Well, we have heat escaping from the house, from the ducts. Here we have air handlers that are hydrocoils that have hot water uh, piped to them. We have conductive heat losses from the gaps in the insulation and through can lights and so forth um, that are heating this attic and that heat is then lost. So what do we do? Well, a conventional approach might be to seal all the holes in the ceiling, seal the can lights, seal the ducts, insulate the ducts, uh, add insulation to the pipes, add insulation to the attic, uh, take care of the attic access hole, uh, and a variety of other strategies to make this uh, energy efficient. Uh, however, because this attic has a wooden deck that is nailed down and hides many of the things that we would try to get to to seal and all these ducts that are installed right on the deck that would have to be moved in order to get underneath there to seal everything properly we've decided to go with the top of the line system and that is super attic the super attic system will convert this attic from a vented unconditioned attic to a unvented conditioned attic while still maintaining a vented roof. What are the advantages? Well, all this duct work carries warm air in the wintertime to the rooms that it's serving and cool air from the air conditioning in the summertime. And this duct work leaks at all these joints. It's not sealed. In addition, there's some insulation on this duct work, but not a lot. And we have conductive heat losses. For example, if I feel this duct, it's warm. It's 39 degrees in this attic. That duct, uh, my thermal imaging camera says the duct there is 63 degrees. So we have a uh, approximately uh, 25 degree uh, temperature difference between the duct and the attic on this day. And that means we'll be losing heat. We pay to heat the air, send it through the ducts, and then it's, some of the heat is lost on its way to the room we intended for it to go to. Once the heat gets in the attic, it is lost. We also have many can light fixtures, which are very common and popular, but they leak like crazy and air goes around that bulb and leaks into the attic and is lost. The super attic system puts the air boundary of the house on the bottom of the roof instead of the attic floor. It also puts the thermal boundary of the house here as well. So this is where the air will stop. We're stopping the air from leaking out of the house. And this is the insulation boundary of the house. We still have a vented roof because we have open rafter bays which allow air to flow from the soffits to the ridge vent which makes that ventilation much more efficient because we're only venting the roof space, not the whole attic. And we're venting out excess heat in the summertime and we are keeping a cold roof in the winter by letting that cold air from outside get in this rafter bay space still to prevent ice damming and so we're not going to have the escaping heat from the house melting snow on the roof only to run down the the top of the roof and then refreeze at the eve because this roof will be nice and cold and totally isolated from the heat source that is the house here we have a bath fan exhaust duct and it used to go along the floor and out there as you can see and it just dived into the soffit and so what we want to do is bring it outside through the sidewall of the gable end. When the bath exhaust goes into the soffit, the airflow in the soffit is from bottom to top. And we've isolated that airflow into one rafter bay with the super attic that we're installing. And so that moist air could go right up in that rafter bay and condense because it's going to be cold in that rafter bay and cause uh, moisture and so forth. So we want to run it right out the sidewall. That's our best priority for bath fan exhaust is out the sidewall, the gable end. Well, we're all done with the super attic system. And I can tell you it is February 15th today, very cold outside and up here in the attic, it is room temperature. I mean, very comfortable. 
So we have a vented roof, but an unvented attic. The attic is conditioned space. The air boundary for the house is the super attic material, the silver glow foam, and so is the insulation boundary. So they're perfectly aligned. There's no gaps. The house is airtight and it's made a dramatic difference in the overall leakiness of this house. By stopping air leaking out of the top of the house, we stopped air leaking in at the bottom to replace the air that left, and you'll feel less drafts at the bottom of the house. This air handling unit, which is a heater and an air conditioner, and it's associated ductwork, is now in a friendly environment instead of a hostile environment. Before the super attic was installed, this attic was very hot in the summer. I mean 130 degrees and we're trying to make 55 degree air with our air conditioning coil inside this ductwork and blowing that 55 degree air through sheet metal ducts in a 130 degree attic. It made no sense, but now the attic will be cooler in the summer. In fact, it won't be much more than maybe 10 degrees warmer than downstairs and this ductwork will feel the benefits. There'll be a lot less dust in the house, and the house is a lot quieter, which the homeowner already commented on. If you have a house that you'd like to have made more energy efficient and more comfortable, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to help you.